All right. This is going to be video three in a series of I don't know how many yet on the one drunk to another to God uh, video series talking about why we drink, who's responsible for it, what can we do about it, and how to quit in that of late. In the last video, uh, you heard some pretty wild stuff about the watchers, and you're probably thinking to yourselves that uh, it's possible this guy's off the deep end <clears throat> and stuff like that. I'm hunting again, by the way, so I'll be keeping an eye on my lanes. But uh, that's natural. We all live in our bubbles of what we think reality is. And these bubbles are generally always put in place by uh, uh, beings that are always trying to keep you from knowing the truth. Everybody, the half the world now is starting to awaken to the fact that the wool has been pulled over their eyes and things that ha they have been led to believe that is important and worthwhile are in fact only self-serving to the giants that we're talking about, the giants of our day, the uh, CEOs and leaders of Fortune 500 companies and, and things uh, of that nature. That being said, <clears throat> I talked mostly about uh, booze. I have been mentioning uh, drugs. <clears throat> I'm not going to thump Bibles and give you scripture and quote because that almost always ends up being a deterrent and a point of argumentation, <clears throat> which is a spirit in itself. But uh, I will bring up a part of the Bible that uh, most are familiar with is when Moses was uh, uh, supposedly Moses was leading the people out of confusion out of uh, captivity which is a likeness for today our captivity is our confusion and it is our addictions and it is our ungodliness and Moses was leading these people out of this captivity at some point they came across a valley where they began to be bitten by snakes by vipers <laughs> and the instruction was of the day to hang a snake on a pole as if it was Christ and raise it up on high and the people were told to worship that snake and that they would be delivered from the poisonous stings of the vipers. Uh, if everything that happened in that Bible is like this in our own lives or our own situations, uh, where do we see a snake hung high on a pole today? The snake on the pole, uh, though everybody has their own opinion as to why, and usually when you see something that that uh, makes sense but doesn't go in your fit in your theology of your faith and your belief, we usually invent all these crazy weird things that don't make sense, but we tell ourselves it does to explain it away. And uh, what I am referring to now is the snakes on the pole at the doctor's office when you go to make a visit. You're always going to see these helix snakes curling around a pole that's going to be on the door of every doctor on you know, all your prescriptions when you uh, if it, it's a sign of medical now it's, a, it's the medical sign for doctors and, and so forth do we look to that pole with that snake on it uh, to be our savior today do we worship that snake do we worship our drugs how much time effort and money have you spent in the obtaining and paying for drugs versus how much time and money have you spent obtaining the healing powers of Christ. I think you'll find that most of us spend way more money on our drugs than we do on the purpose and uh, necessity of, in the team effort of Christ being spread among the world to help people. Uh, I think that story happened with Moses and tell them to worship that snake on the pole was for the sole purpose of us because we were going to read that stories read these stories uh, years later here we are in our own wilderness and in fact it is showing us today exactly what we're doing we're 
we were being stung by these venomous vipers, which is all these Fortune 500 companies, all these people that, these giants that demand more and more service, more and more feeding that we can't, we can't possibly keep up the demand with now. And then now we're being told by our spiritual leaders, who in that day was Moses, and, and this day our government, that we need to look up to the two snakes on the pole and and go there, worship it for our salvation, for protection against our our, uh, our viperous stings and uh, all of our troubles. And we're doing essentially that. Drugs is another doorway just like booze is. It reconfigures uh, things in the brain that allows interdimensional beings to take hold of you. <laughs> if you look in the very beginning of the day, when, when uh, drugs were becoming, uh, after the watchers had taught people, these people that could make drugs were known as the foreseers, meaning they could foresee things. They could see things of the former world. They were looking into uh, the future and the past, and they were, they were doing this through spirits. That Where these spirits are in this dimension, there is no such thing as time. Time is an earthly thing, so all things from the past and future are known when you escape this earthly vessel. Uh, time is only a slave, we're only a slave to time while we're in this state. So these spirits can guide men uh, in ways that will make them rich, make them powerful, make money, in fact, become giants. Uh, that being said, that clue of the snakes on the pole is only one among many that uh, has led me in this belief that we are in fact suffering from a spiritual problem, not a physical problem. Drug addiction is a spiritual problem. It is a problem that deals with other dimensions where these beings were commanded to remain as a result of a crime they committed you know, in uh, infecting God's uh, garden with weed. No pun intended. God plants a, a, uh, a, uh, a good fruit, which the uh, Bible refers to as a, as a wheat, which was uh, uh, a likeness for people that would follow him. And along comes the devil who plants what the Bible calls a tear, which is a likeness for a weed, a useless plant. It's in your garden, but you can't eat of its fruit right, because it's poisonous to you. And if you do eat of its fruit, then uh, you become sick and ill and so on and so forth. Now, you don't really have to buy into the fact that these giants today are possessed by spirits. And they are teaching all of us to be opened up to be possessed by spirits. <clears throat> Doesn't really matter. All you really need to know is that what you've been trying thus far to quit drinking hasn't been working. Your concepts of what you think and know about God thus far has not delivered you from pains and the evils of the world that you've been praying God to deliver you from. Therefore, it only makes sense that you should try another direction. If it's not this direction, or this theology, perhaps another one. But I do know that God is not weak, and God is not unable to deliver you from addiction. He is not unable to deliver you from illnesses. He is not unable to deliver you from any problems that this world can bring upon you, or you bring upon yourself. If you haven't been delivered, and you still have troubles, and you're still a drunkard, and you're trying to quit being a drunkard, and if you feel you have a pretty good close relationship with God, apparently that relationship ain't worth the paper it's written on or not written on because it can't deliver you. So apparently there's call for some change. Psalms 54 or 55, I believe, it talks about a, uh, it talks about a people. It's a guy crying out to God because he's got all these enemies that are attacking him and all these people are trying to bring him down and within that story it says something very interesting the guy says you know 
if this would have been an enemy, I could have, I could have, I could have handled it. I could have, I could have taken it. If this would have been somebody that was against me, uh, it would have been bearable. But it wasn't somebody against me. It was them that I walked into the church with, them that I was seeking God with. He's talking about his Christian brothers. At some point, we're going to realize it's not enough for a people to say that they're Christians and people to say that they love God. Because as that Psalms, either 54 or 55, I forget which, maybe I'll put a link to it on the bottom of this video. At some point, we're going to find that it's our so-called Christian brothers who are actual, in fact, our enemies and actually pulling us down with misinterpretations, with misconceptions, with theologies that come from childhood that we can't seem to let go. And then that psalm goes further in saying that these people are against God because they cannot change. It's a very important thing. If you're going to be a Christian, if you're going to be looking for God to help you be delivered, you're going to have to change these notions and thoughts that you have, that you thought were right, and then you're still drowning in booze and in dope and addictions of all other different kinds. If you're still having troubles with these things, you better look for that change. You better find something that's more stronger and more powerful than what you have today that's allowed you to spend your whole life fighting the same old tired battle over and over. You know, this whole walk in life, you're supposed to be walking this life every day. No matter if you go an inch or you go a mile a day, you're supposed to maintain that direction. And if addiction is your problem, if addiction is the only thing you've been fighting, well, now you know the reason, or one of the reasons, that these giants want you to be addicted in the first place. You can't come to God if you're too busy trying to come to your own salvation from addiction. You can't learn what God has in store for you, what he wants you to do. If you're too busy trying to pick yourself up out of the mud of addiction. I've had close personal friends that's fought addiction all their lives. When they could have been doing other things for God. But yet they, all they seem to get around is to doing is fighting the same old tired addiction problem. When they could have gone miles and miles in the plan of God. They've crept inches and inches. Then they started going backwards. What the Bible refers to as backsliding. And then we fall on that tired old excuse. Well, I'm weak. Well, at least you got it right. You're weak. It's not God. It's not the God you serve. It's not that he has a problem delivering. you. It's that you have a problem coming to deliverance. And what keeps you from deliverance is your own theology. It's your own belief in who and what you think God is. All that being said, we're drowning in it today. We're drowning in booze. We're drowning in prescription medicines. We're drowning in illegal drugs. If you sit down with a pen and paper and just write everything that you take that's got the two snakes on the pole covered under their protection, if it's a, if it's a pharmaceutical drug, no matter what it is, if you write it down, and if you smoke joints, if you write that down, if you, how much wine or beer you drink, if you write that down, and then write next to it, start a new column, and then write down the things that you've done for the glory of God, and for the plan of God, the things that you've done, even if it's something as simple as helping an old lady on and off an elevator. If you write down those things next to it, what would you find? Who are you serving? Who has become your God? Okay, I'm going to end this video. It's already 14 minutes long. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to try to go into another angle, and that is you know, how to come to a thought process about our Father, our spiritual Father, how to let go of the old mainstays, beliefs, and systems that were instilled in place in us years and years ago, even since the time we were children, how to let go of those childish uh, fables and grab on to something tangible which is from that Holy Spirit, which is where God is trying to get us the whole time. Get us to that Holy Spirit to be our strength. That we can have strength against addiction and, and other things that uh, keep us back and enable us on this rock until we find a better way.
So thank you for taking a listen at this uh, at this video, and in uh, in uh, I'll see you in the next one. Adios.